This episode of On the Line is presented to you by Living.Fit, your one stop for all your fitness needs. Make sure you go download the app Living.Fit today. Now here's the show. Welcome to On the Line. Today is Friday, September 16th. We got an awesome show. We got Tanner Bozer on for like the third time. Uh, awesome conversation with him. You catch us like in the middle of like our uh, pre-interview conversation. I thought it was pretty funny, so I left it up there. Uh, once we wrap up with Tanner, obviously he's fine this weekend, but once we wrap up with him, uh, we got Dan, also known as Best Vice Picks on Twitter. He comes on to help us preview UFC Vegas 60. Song Yudong, Corey St. Nick, an awesome card, awesome re- preview. Uh, then we will, once we wrap up with that, we dive on to our medals for the week. But without further ado, if you listen on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, listen on Apple, Spotify, Deezer, Stitcher, and the other podcasting platform, hit that follow, leave a review, tell your friends, maybe leave two reviews. I don't know how to do that, but that'd be kind of cool too. But um, without further ado, let's go and dive on to Tanner Bozer, uh, where we're actually in the middle of talking about the last time he got like a death threat. So um, that's how we opened that one up. You're probably going to get yeah. another one probably no matter what. <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> doesn't matter. I think that's the funniest part about not funniest part, but it doesn't really matter what you do. You're gonna get like a bunch of positive and then also a ton of negative. Yeah, like yeah, no matter there's what. No there's no middle. There's no middle. But now I feel like I'm part not I'm not one of you guys. I'm never gonna have someone telling me I lost them their parlay or I lost them a yeah. ton of money, but I'll get a bunch of people I've actually had a lot of people call me dipshit, um, things like that. That was the first time someone went to like my Instagram and <laughs> just went at me. I was like, Okay. Sick. I should have called him a fat ass. That's where I fucked up. But it is what did it is. you just not reply and just let him go? No, I hit him with an LOL. Okay. Oh no, no, you can't do that. You got to either be mean or just not reply. Yeah, I think not, I've, I've learned yeah. my lesson. Well, it's because I was thinking to myself, do I want to be a nice guy or do I just want to be a jackass? And then, like, I slept on it. I woke up and I'm like, shit, I shouldn't have replied. I should have just hit him with the okay, you fat ass or okay, fatty. And yeah, whatever. What can what you do? What What can I do? What can? It's I not do? too late. You can revisit it. <laughs> Just go back. <laughs> then he knows he got he, he got some real estate in your head, though. Unfortunately, that's and that's and that's the issue. But I'll always remember as my yeah. first. I think that's the important that's right. part. He'll always be my. Yeah, first. that's good. That's good. <laughs> so let's dive on into you, man. Let's just, let's just, we'll just use all that. That was a fun fun conversation part. But like, you got to fight coming out with Rodrigo Nascimento. Second time has been booked. To be fair, you have been undefeated for the last fifteen months. Haven't lost. Haven't lost. You got Rodrigo again. Um, is it kind of this? This is my dumb brain coming into play here. But do you feel like you not overthinking it, but like for being you've been matched up with them now twice. Is it like do you think you're almost like too prepared? No, that no, I, I prepared for him once. Uh, I got um uh, he pulled out as well. He got hurt. I got hurt. Now we're fighting again. Fuck it's doesn't matter. I gotta prepare either way, no matter who I'm fighting. So I prepared for him a couple times. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like a dumb take where like i don't forget who i was talking i think it was zach pago was talking to you about it where he was kind of talking about how it was like i almost feel too prepared and then he got knocked out by muhammad Usman. but like i'm not saying you're gonna get knocked out i'm just saying overthinking sometimes it can come into your mind games or whatever you just gotta go out there and fight your fight um which by the way uh i was looking at those pictures you just posted you're looking a little beefier dude you're looking bigger looking like you put on some weight like good weight oh, you're, like you're, good weight you know, you're out to lunch man i'm lighter really yeah i'm like 230 right now damn Damn. Yeah. I forget, well, regardless, the body looks better, though. Yeah, well, thanks, man. Well, you're welcome. I thought I'd give you a compliment. No, it looks better. It looks better. So, look, the slonkers are working. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> slonkers all day. <laughs> when do you, do you ever, do you cut them out at some point during the week? Is there a certain point, was there a certain point, like, before a fight, you have to stop, like, drinking them? Because I know you, that's, like, actually a consistent thing you do. Yeah, no, I would be doing it all this week, except we don't have a fridge, so I have nowhere to put eggs. There's no fridge in your hotel? No, there's no fridge in any of the rooms at New York, New York. There's a, a communal fridge downstairs where the PI, uh, the UFC Performance Institute, puts our meals that they make us. So I have meals in the fridge that I can go downstairs and nuke, but uh, there's, there's no fridge. So no slonkers this week. I'll have to actually eat cooked eggs. I'm shocked you guys don't have a fridge. Like, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, they, they deliberately don't put any in these rooms, I guess, I'm assuming, because they want people to go uh, down and buy liquor and buy food. At the, all the restaurants in the resort or whatever, I guess. <laughs> Which makes no sense because they also have fighters in there too. Like, <clears throat> what the fuck? Yeah, I have no idea. No idea, man. <laughs> I mean, look, it's like I said, it's an inconvenience for me. It's annoying. But for the guys cutting weight, it's fucking way worse. Oh, I can imagine. That's what I was thinking of. Like, you don't even have to worry about it, which is also why we're able to do this literally 
three days before the, the yeah, fight. Yeah. It's like, you don't have, you, I mean, you're at this point, you're just kind of chilling, just killing time, trying to just like, you know, loosen up and not think too much about it, I'm assuming, right? It tra- I train, you know, once a day we go to the PI today, what we did tomorrow, uh, I will as well. I had a bunch of interviews and um, media stuff I had to do today at the Apex. Tomorrow, I don't have anything booked. So yeah, tomorrow I'll go to the PI and train. And besides that, day's open. You know, you just said, you know, people like to relax and keep their mind off it. You definitely want to stay light. You don't want to be fucking tense and fuming the whole time, obviously. But I like to program my brain that the fight's already here. Because I think it's a dangerous game to get into when you're telling yourself, oh, man, there's so long until I get, have to fight. It's a three, day, three days is a long time or whatever it, it may be. I think that that's a dangerous place to let your mind go because I think, it, I think it's weak. I think it's better to put, put in your brain that the fight's right now. I'm already at the fight. The fight's been happening for weeks. Um, it's the fight's right now, man. Fuck it. And I, I'm ready. I've been ready. So it doesn't matter when the fight's truly here because I'm already in the fight in a way. So uh, real quick, do you like? I'm assuming you get like the butterflies in your stomach, like before a fight, all that kind of stuff. Like you just like you can feel it. Like you can just feel like, all right, dude, I'm about to go into a fight. I mean, you get that, right? Yeah, yeah, I get nervous. Every, I think everybody, yeah, uh, gets nervous. So like, when do you, uh, when do you feel it the most? Is it like when the cage locks? Is it like when you're no. making your walkout, or is it like in the back, or like when is for, it? For me, I think my nervousness is at the peak when I'm driving to the venue for the fight. That's my peak, I'd say. When I get there, I start to, to come down a little when I'm warming up. I'm nervous, but it's, you know, it's, it's a different, it's a different kind. You're also ready. And then when I walk out, it's, I'm, I'm all gone. That's no more emotion. So like, how do you kill the butterflies? Just going through the motions? I have no idea. I've done it a lot of times and my, my brain just does a thing. I guess there's nothing I, I do consciously to calm myself down at any point. It's just, yeah, you go through. You go through the uh, that emotional roller coaster enough times, you you learn it, I guess. And everybody's probably different with it as well, but that's how mine is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm always interested about that. Do you are you kind of tired of fighting at the apex too? This is like what you haven't fought in front of a crowd now since what 2019. <clears throat> Last time I fought in front of a crowd was in South Korea, and yeah, 2019. Um, Jesus. I am tired of of fighting in the apex because. Now there's a very small crowd, but because referees tend to let stalling happen more when there's no crowd booing them. And obviously that's never my game plan. And it Mm -hmm. is uh, something that would be advantageous to me should they not allow it. But another thing is I have a lot of friends and family that would like to come watch me fight. And I had my very first fight. Uh, which was in Boston. I had a few friends and a little bit of family be able to come down there. Obviously, no one came. Well, actually, that's not true. I had a couple of friends come to South Korea, which is insane. But obviously, cool, most, <laughs> yeah, it is. Most of my friends and family did not come. And then COVID happened, and everything was Apex or Fight Island. And I would, I have friends and family that would like to come, and I would like them to be able to come, but you can't. Be, like, truly, the Apex is like VIP only, and the minimum price for tickets is like two grand ish. And it's, come on, like no one's, we're not doing that. I'm not making millions of dollars here. So I'm, no one's coming. So yeah, it would be nice to be at an event where people could actually come watch. Well, luckily it seems like it's starting to pick up though. It's like maybe like once every couple months. It has to be kind of shitty because like I know all you guys, when you sign your bouts, most of you guys don't know because it's like a couple months in advance and they're not sure if an event's going to be somewhere yet. So you're like, you're kind of, it's kind of like a potluck for you guys. And you kind of- Yeah, that's right. Like I I didn't know where this was going to be, but that said, while I would prefer- to fight in a place that would have a crowd now i used to say i didn't care and i didn't these are reasons that i've found where I, right now currently i think i would prefer a crowd so my friends and family could come but um i would accept the fight wherever it is anyways so while i would prefer that i wouldn't wait for the event to be announced uh location wise and be like oh no i don't want to fight at the apex it's fine like it's not the end of the world or anything but yeah i'm just saying yeah, 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 I mean, like, it's like you're like after this fight, th- theoretically, you're like, you know what? Fuck it. I like the small cage. I don't want to go fight in a big cage. I just want to beat the shit out of people in a small cage. Um, yeah. So I've fought in the small cage almost every single time, but uh, stylistically, a big cage is probably better for me. But I don't like. It doesn't really yeah. matter. It's it's good enough. Like, cage is fine. I was gonna say, does even do you do you even really do you do you actively like when you're in there? Do you even notice that it's smaller? Hmm. 
I mean, no, because you just have to adapt to whatever size the cage is. And I've, I've been in that one a lot of times now. And the, the cage we have at our gym is actually the exact same size as a small cage. Like it's a small UFC size cage. So I train in that one all the time anyways. So it's like nothing. It doesn't really even affect you really. No, it's fine. Yeah, I was, I was gonna. I feel. I thought you were gonna give me the classic answer of the guy who don't give a shit what size the cage is. I thought that's what you were gonna give me. Yeah. I mean, I'm a guy that likes to move a lot, right? So yeah. a, a big cage is is good for a guy that wants to move and doesn't want to get stalled. But at the same time, I train in a small cage. The small cage is is fine. I don't really care either way. Yeah. yeah. So when we go go to Nascimento back real quick, was this? I know you were offered like Walt Harris and like the timing didn't work or whatever. Um, did did you want Nascimento right after you like that fight didn't work out, or did they just come back to you with like, hey, I just want to run this back? Is that kind of what? Yeah, happened? yeah. Well, I got offered Walt Harris and I thought I was fighting him for a few days because like I signed the boat agreement. Okay. But uh, then he said, well, I can't fight in September. I want to fight in October, uh, which is all good. I, is cool. But I, I was like, I, I can't wait. I, if I can fight on this date in September, I want to fight in this date in September because I just need to get paid sooner than October and a month sooner is a month sooner. Mm-hmm. So they, then they, they came back and they just said Nascimento again. And I'm like, okay, like it's fine. I never fought him and I was scheduled to fight him. So sure. Why not? Why not? We already, we already know who each other is and we already said yes. So, you know, they throw that one up. Both of us are probably just going to be like, yeah, okay. You know? Yeah, you know he's going to say yes. You know you're not going to have to deal with the, uh, all that like little yeah, bullshit yeah. like political stuff. But also, you're also undefeated against Brazilians, so it's like a good matchup. You know, you've never lost to one. That's true. I mean, I've only fought two, but yes, it's still a statistic. It's like me saying you've never, you haven't lost in 15 months. You were undefeated in the year mm-hmm. 2022. Yeah, that was, that was cheeky, yes. Well, I haven't <laughs> fought in 15 months. So I guess it is longer than that, technically, but yeah. Stupid ass spin zones is what I'm good at. So one thing I learned recently was uh, your cousin plays in the NHL. Is this like a family? Are you guys like a family of athletes or are you guys kind of like outliers? I just kind of uh, made your Um, way through the mud. Yeah, no, my my cousin uh, was playing on the San Jose Sharks there uh, for two years. I think he was playing two years. Um, I don't know what he's doing this year, but uh, yeah, he him and his brothers played hockey very competitively, dedicatedly growing up, they put it, put, went all in a couple of them, you know, uh, yeah. Prince and Pashnuk's his name and his brother, Steen Pashnuk, they played hard and they, they both made playing professional. Uh, and yeah, I ended up doing pro MMA. My brother had a pro fight. So, I mean, yeah, our, our families are both fairly athletic, I guess, but also a lot of hard work. You know, they didn't make the NHL draft when they were 16. They had to grind into their 20s, and I didn't make UFC till I was 20 plus fights in. So, I'd say we maybe we just have good work ethic. And those the parallels too, because both those sports, you really have to go all in. You can't like half-ass your way through it unless like you have God-given gifts that are like you know generational. Like you really have to bust your ass to make it as a professional fighter, as a professional hockey player, because there's so many loops you have to go through. Yeah, that's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. It is a lot of work. So one more thing too. I know you had a nightmare airline experience. Was that maybe the worst experience you've ever had? Well, no, it's not the worst experience I've ever had, but I mean, yes, the airlines. Are <laughs> but customer we're, service, customer service. That's we're complete about. dumpster fires. Um, it was a disaster. I've had a couple, but this time we got here very painlessly and our flight back is, is straight from Vegas to Edmonton. So it would be really, really hard for them to mess this up. It's, it's looking good, man. It's looking good. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we can break the streak. Is it on? Is it? Uh, I'm assuming just like Sunday after, like hopefully yeah, like Sunday. middle of the day, not like you have to wake up yeah. super early after. It's nice. No, and chill uh, I wouldn't sleep if it was early. I just simply wouldn't sleep. It's hard to sleep after a fight, anyways. Win or lose, you're not really sleeping. But yeah, it's like in the afternoon. So either way, it's easy flight to make. So actually, let's go on to that. It's like you say you don't you have a hard time sleeping after. Like, is it? Do you have a? It might, this might be dumb. Do you have an easier time sleeping if you win or lose is like one or the other? Or is it just still like, it doesn't matter which, which, or like you're still not going to really go to sleep. Just it's like just so hard. Yeah. You're not coming down yet. Like either if you won or if you lost, if you lost, you're so bummed. You're in such a de- depressed state. And if you won, you're at such a high, you're still recovering from it. And the experience, the amount of adrenaline and, and you're, you hurt, everything hurts probably at least a lot of things do. Yeah, you're just not sleeping, and you have no reason to sleep. You just did the thing that you've been training for for months. So, yeah, it's 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 tough to sleep, and it doesn't really matter if you do or not. Anyway, I had to go back and recheck. So I I was like, yeah, I don't think you've been knocked out in a while. You haven't been finished in a while, so it's like you haven't really experienced what it's like though, like that. Then, so I feel like if you well, get finished, it's got to be a little, a little different. 
I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure it is. But losing a close decision sucks well, way more. Yeah, say, you don't want to get knocked out. Fucked. But, but, if, but if, you, <laughs> if you lose a decision that you think you won, you're up all night anyway because you're just lamenting what if I would have done this one thing different, like fuck, you know, like it's the worst. But I say that's the worst. Everything's the worst. That's the worst. If you get beat decisively, that sucks ass too, right? You don't want to be like, well, I got my ass kicked or you got knocked out or something. That's all. It all sucks. Losing sucks. And either way, you're going to lose sleep over losing. Way better to lose sleep over winning. That's a good way to lose sleep. So when you win, like, so like, what are you, what are you always thinking back on? Like, oh, I could have finished him here. Or I could have done this better. Is like that kind of stuff. Oh, no, you're not, you're not worried about that stuff. You, you'll think about what you could have done better on a win when you get back to the gym, when you're back home. You're just, you haven't come down. You're getting every, everything is just an additional little boost, like a little dopamine hit. Everything, everything tastes yeah. better. Every drink tastes better. Everything's better. Everything is better after a fight. And you don't want to come down from it. It's like a drug. And, and every single win you get doesn't get you quite as high as the last time. It's crazy. Interesting. 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 That's really fascinating. So going to the, like the whole like thought process, things like that. Cause I know you said like losing, like either you think it's easier, like obviously the split decision sucks. Like you keep thinking about it when you lose decisive with those, I did a little more closure though. It's like, all right, it was decisive. I can't make my arguments. I guess it, it just depends on the individual fight. It depends on the individual fight. Like, I don't, I don't know. Um, and it probably depends on the person. Like when you, when you lose a fight and it's close, it fucking sucks. And the only fight I've lost in years that wasn't close was to Cyril gone. And, uh, after that, I mean, it sucks. Cause I, I, I lost for sure. I kind of got beat up, uh, but I'm, it's it's a different kind of suck it's like well fuck me like i just i don't know man i just gotta get better like i i had to go and get better but when you lose a fight that you're positive you won or a fight that you still think you won and it was close that just fucking sucks just digs in at you which i know for instance like you know you've been really adamant over the past like ever since you won the first fight first fight got booked we talked about it too it's like you really are going all out to make sure you don't even go to a decision like you're going all out for the finish at this point like fuck fuck point fighting fuck all that like it's just i don't even want to risk it yeah i mean if 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 you got to get uh got to get in there and get dirty and try and get the finish in order to make sure you don't go to judges that seem to never uh think you want to fight then yeah, I mean, you gotta gotta do what you gotta do. Gotta do what you gotta do. All right, here's here's the worst question of all sports, and you know it's just like I gotta ask it. It's just what everyone wants to know is how are you gonna finish them? How are you gonna finish this fight? <laughs> By knockout. All right, I like it. Easy answer. Love to hear it. All right, so obviously go check them out. Tanner Bowser, Bulldozer Bowser. Uh, any other sponsors? No, well, Ax, Ax Monkeys. Yeah, you bet. Ax Monkeys Edmonton is a sponsor of mine. Um, been with me for a long time. I really appreciate it. I have Paul Pedal Services, Premier Built Garages, and Element Chiropractic. Uh, all been big helps, and I appreciate them all a ton. Uh, my gyms are Shave Bears MMA out of a little sweatshop, and frankly, Muay Thai. And my coaches are Cadre Onoda, Jeff Montemiro, uh, Roger Alves, and Mitch Clark. And, what about Deuce Vodka? Uh, we're working on Deuce Vodka again, but we don't have, we don't, not right now. Not right now. Know. Okay. Well, whatever the shot is, you have to make it like, if it's like a, if you do it for Halloween, you have to make it like a pumpkin. Do the same colors and everything that like you've been doing over the past couple. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> right, also, by the way, the Axe Monkey sponsorship has to be one of the coolest sponsorships you can get. Like that is a pretty sick sponsorship. For yeah, they're throwing, good shit. Have like, you ever so, done it? It's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. <laughs> do you just get to go in there whenever you want? I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just never. You're, you're focused on No, that. I go. I go here and there for sure. Okay. Well, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. All right, man. Appreciate you coming on as always. Thank you for coming on literally like three days before the fight. Uh, appreciate you. Now you're going to kick some ass. Good luck on Saturday, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Okay, let's go on and dive on into UFC Vegas 60. We're joined by a very special guest. He is Best Fight Picks, Dan Levy, my man. Thanks for coming on. Uh, thank you so much for having me. How's it going, gentlemen? Oh, it's going fantastic. Great, great. Going fantastic. Just excited for this card. Probably the best card we have in this little like three-week round here, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, assuming we win our bets, it will be right. But uh, <laughs> nah, nah, nah. you know, this main event is is fire, and I'm just bummed the Sodiq Yusuf and Giga Chikazi fight got canceled. But besides that, it's a great card for sure. Oh, 100 percent. That sucks to see. And then now he's fighting who? This like uh, he's fighting. He's welcoming someone in the UFC, which I didn't really even think would happen. That's kind of weird for a rank guy to be welcoming somebody. 
Yeah, the kid he's welcoming is actually pretty tough. Uh, one of my buddies, Nate Williams, beat him on the regional scene, but despite in a winning effort, we still thought the kid was tough. So I'm glad to see him get his UFC opportunity. Will be an interesting fight. Will be a very interesting fight coming up here soon. But let's go ahead and dive on UFC Vegas 60. Uh, again, for those unaware, we go through the fights, give little fight descriptions, uh, that then give our picks. So let's just go ahead and dive on into it. First one, pretty easy. It's called the Just Bleed fight. It's our uh, fight of the night uh, guarantee. Um, Dan, let's just start off with you. Who's your uh, Who's your Just Bleed? Your fight of the night? Well, it's got to be the main event. I mean, listen, Sanhagen versus Song. You know that these guys aren't going to be humping each other's legs. You know that these guys aren't going to make the crowd boo. Like These guys are going to go out there and deliver violence, man. When you're talking about a guy like Corey Sanhagen, for a while we were calling him the output king of the Bantamweight division. And Song Yadong, he's one of the knockout kings in the Bantamweight division. So I think that there's no way this fight is boring. That's my just bleed fight of the night. Hell yeah. I agree 100%. Anthony, who's your just bleed fight of the night? Yeah, I'm going with the same fight for pretty much all the same reasons. Um, these guys are going to stand and bang. Both of them like to fight. They're not afraid to get punched. Um, they are willing to take a punch to give a punch. Um, and even if it gets on the ground, you know, Sam Hagen's dangerous too on the ground, so he can make it exciting there. But yeah, not to regurgitate a bunch of things that Dan said, pretty much all the same reasons why I, that's my just bleed fight of the night. You see, I wanted to use the same thing, and like I said, I don't want to regurgitate the same shit. We kind of covered it. Um, I went different route. I have this one put later on down the list. Uh, mine is actually going to be – this might sound weird. It's going to be Anthony Hernandez, Mark andre Barrial. So the reason I picked this is like I don't think we're going to see uh, Mexican Habib again. I don't think Hernandez is going to go out there and cross the Barrial for uh, 15 minutes. I think they're going to stand there and bang. Um, I don't know. I just have a gut feeling. In my vein, in my balls, but I also didn't want to put Sam Hagen and Song Dong on there, so I just picked Anthony Hernandez and <laughs> Andre Barrio. Um, so that was pretty easy uh, for you guys and for us. But anyway, let's move on to our next one the Dana White Privilege. This week, there really isn't a Dana White Privilege fight. No one's really being set up, I think. Um, yes, there is. Well, all right. Oh, you have an easy one. All right. Who is it? <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's Joe Pfeiffer. Fuck, Man, that's what I had too. <laughs> <laughs> he got the easiest fight on the roster. He's fighting Alan Avadovsky, who literally just got a train ran through him his last two fights, has no business in the UFC. And you know what's funny about it is I don't even think Joe Pfeiffer is that good. And that's no disrespect. Like, he's entertaining. <laughs> I like his story. But, like, as a betting man, if this guy's consistently minus 400, I'm going to be looking to fade him. Just not this weekend. But hopefully, best case scenario for us betters is he goes out there, starches, this absolute, you know, jobber he's fighting named Alan Amadovsky. And then he, he he becomes a juiced favorite his next fight against someone that's actually good. And we slam those underdog odds. But yeah, Joe Pfeiffer, Dana White privilege this week for sure. Yeah, I was going to say that's why I had too. I was like, he's, he's fighting a jabroni. He's, he's, he's trying to uh, build off that contender series bump. They're going to set him up uh, in the best way possible. Um, but it's not like, you know, when I was saying, like, you know, there's not an obvious Dana White. Not, no, no one's being set up for, like, a title shot or shit like this. But it's go off the hype that he's gotten around Joe Pfeiffer. Body Bags. One of the, that's a sick nickname, by the way. One of the best nicknames in the game. Body Bags. But with a Z, not an S. Like, it's pretty badass. Uh, but, <laughs> Anthony, who do you got for your Dana White privilege? Um, I'm going with Zell Huber and Trey Ogden. Um, I, I think Zell Huber, I mean, he's a 23-year-old, so he's a young guy still. Still developing. Took a year off from uh, his Dana White Contender Series fight till now. Ogden just got outstruck by Jordan Levitt, and that's <laughs> not a good sign at all. So if that's happening, Zell Huber should have his way. Um, and I think that the UFC kind of knows that. And so it's just kind of a, a good setup fight for him to... Ogden's a solid vet. I mean, he's not bad, but I don't think he's going to come out here and do anything unexpected. And I expect Zell Huber to get this easy dub it's a tough scene to get out struck by jordan love that's a real tough scene. it really is man <laughs> it's an even tougher scene for the guy to twerk after he outstrikes you <laughs> <laughs> that's facts that's a fact but no that's a, that was my backup that was my backup to that one but yeah, that one will be that's going to be another little little set little showcase some say so all right so we kind of had the fun fights slash setups uh, this is the fight that we really don't care. You know, if you want to go get some booze, you want to go smoke a little bit, maybe you want to walk the dog. This is, uh, that's that fight. Uh, the fight really don't care about. I uh, was just start off with you, Dan. I, li I like this little, I like the, I like the cycle we got going on here. Let's just start off with you. What's your smoke break? 
Oh, it's definitely Aspen Lad versus Sarah McMahon. You kidding me? Have Have you all seen uh, Aspen Lad versus Norma Dumont? Yes. Like Norma Dumont has some very nice assets, and to make her boring, like you gotta like literally just you know <laughs> not throw anything, and that's exactly what she did when Aspen Lad fought Norma Dumont. Probably the worst fight I've ever seen in my life. And I, I Wait, actually worse, think worse I'm than, wrong. Uh, Rose and uh, Carla. Well, see, I was gonna actually backtrack because. Neither of I didn't see a fight break out in either of those matches. Let's just call them matches. Let's not even call them fights because did, did y'all see a fight break out? Because I sure as hell didn't. So I after that Norma Dumont versus Aspen Ladd uh, match, I never want to see Aspen Ladd compete ever again. Like that was enough to just completely like. Dude, I got zero interest. I don't give a fuck if you're fighting. Like, and then she's taking on Sarah McMahon, who is actually like pretty decent. It's just her issue is she'll be dominating someone and then dive head first into a sub or or pull a stunt in the third round. And so this is gonna be interesting to see how it plays out. It's just I won't be watching it. I'll be walking my dog. See, I like that. I like the reasoning. That was uh again, I was between this and the one I picked, but the reason you said was like, you know, kind of she falls in like these she falls in like the random gear teams or falls into like random submissions. That's why I don't have it as my smoke break, because like I think it has a lot of meme potential potential yeah, as we move on in the fight. But uh, mine is Jillian Robertson in uh, Agapova. Um it's just it was, Really? Yeah, that was my toss up. I just I don't know. The soul level of women's MMA and also I think Aspen Ladd and Sarah McMahon could be kind of funny. That's the main reason. This is it could be funny. <laughs> Anthony? Mine is Aspen Ladd and Sarah McMahon. Oh. Um, mainly because Aspen Ladd is just lo- very low IQ, very boring. Um, and Sarah McMahon is, her fighting style is also very boring. She's just c- trying to grapple, get into the ground, and wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. It's, it's just, I don't care the outcome of this fight at all. So this would be the fight I'm taking a break on. I'm going to give a, I've never done this before, and this will be a first. I'm going to add that one too. I'm going to have two. <laughs> it's gonna be that one too. <laughs> I'm just gonna have that because I'm probably not gonna watch it anyway. Um, but yeah, those 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 won't be the well, the, the Acapulco Arbus. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, move on to our next one, which is uh, I hope both guys have fun. We've already talked about this one. This is what I had earlier. It was a uh, Song Yudong, Corey Sanhagen. I love both these guys. I hope they go in there. I hope they just have fun. Uh, I know someone's probably gonna get finished, but I just hope it's uh, nothing too crazy. But also at the same time, though, I hope one of them just gets fucking flashlined. So um, Song Yudong, Corey Sanhagen. I hope they have fun in there. <laughs> but since that was one we already talked about. Dan, what do you have? Uh, you got to go the co-main event between uh, RoboCop Rodriguez and Chitty and Jaquani, man. I mean, have you all seen RoboCop fight before? Like, I just want to sit back and enjoy it, man. I mean, the guy's a banger. He's taking on another banger. Chances are someone's hitting the deck. So, yeah, it's definitely Rodriguez versus Enja Kawani for me. I hope uh, both guys have fun. I like it. I like it. I like it. Anthony? Yeah, mine is uh, Anthony Hernandez and Mark Andre Barriut. I think both of these guys are exciting fighters. They both bring the fight. Um, even if Hernandez is going to come out with a wrestling game plan, he likes to ground and pound. He likes to go for submissions. So he's not just going to lay and pray. Um, he's actually going to fight on top. And then Andre Barriut, you know, he takes, he always brings the fight. He likes to knock out people early in fights, especially. So, um, and he's hitable. These guys just. And he's hittable. So I hope these guys, you know, have a little fun. <laughs> and they'll all have some fun. Um, all right. So we're kind of going over. We're going we're trucking along, trucking along. We're going next one, we got the McKinney Minute Fight, named after Terrence McKinney. Uh, this is the fight that won't see the judges. Uh, might make it past the first round, but it won't see the judges. Again, this is one we already talked about. Uh, I have Andrew Kuyani and RoboCop, Gregory Rodriguez. I don't see how this thing even makes it out of the first round. Uh, I just think one of them is going to go to sleep, and it's going to be a very entertaining fight. Um, but I hope they have fun too. I hope they both have fun in there, but uh, I just don't see it going past the first round. I thought this was kind of a, a layup. Uh, Dan, what do you have? You're going to be surprised by this, man, because you actually picked this as your smoke break fight, and I think it's going to prove you wrong because I think <laughs> Robertson and Agapova is not going the, to the judges' scorecards, man. Like I think that they're both weak where the other one is strong. Agapova, I mean, if – if Jillian Robertson takes Agapova's back, she's choking her out. And if Agapova can stuff Jillian's takedowns, she's knocking her out or potentially dropping her and subbing her. So I think that this one's not going the distance. That's fair. I like That's fair. that. I like that. And I agree 100%. Anthony? I'm rocking with uh, Trevin Giles and oh, Sir Giles. Luis Cosi. Um, Cosi. Giles has been, yeah, Cosi. He's been finished what is last two fights i think it was 
Yeah, in the first and second round, Kosi literally has never seen the judges. Um, yeah, he has seven fights that were all first round finishes and then a third round loss. So um, I think someone's going to finish in this fight and it's probably going to be early. Officer Giles is going to come out fire and he's like, it's two straight losses. And he just like, this yep. is the second fight after quitting being a police officer. So I shouldn't, technically he's no longer Officer Giles, but he'll always be Officer Giles to me. But uh, yeah, so we got, uh, that'll be a fun one. That'll be a very fun one. So the next one we got, this is a new one brought in last week, is the Captain Hindsight fight. This is the fight where you look at, this is a little more betting oriented, where it's like, you look at the odds, you're like, wow, this makes no sense because he's so heavily favored or why isn't it like a bigger favorite? So for me, uh, I picked Van Camp versus Moda because I think Van Camp, if he gets it to the ground, he finishes Moda wherever he wants. I think it's just a masterclass down there. Um, but I think it's at the end of the day, I don't really, I'm not really a big believer in uh, Moda. But uh, and I think like being knocked out by Andre Fialo, like uh, going up a weight class, that's that's nothing to like really be like, I don't think you can put that against him. Like he has touch of death, but um, going up a weight class. So it is what it is. I think that I think Van Camp in hindsight will be closer to a pick him. Maybe even he should be a favorite, but uh, that's my uh, hindsight fight. Yeah. Um, I got to go with my boy Zell Huber. I think he should be an even bigger favorite. You know, it's funny. When you first sent me the list, he was minus 245, and that's where I bet him at. And now, finally, some action's been coming in on him. I, I think he should be an even bigger favorite. I think that this is literally one of the best prospects that's come into the UFC in a long time. I like everything about him. And the other dude was, let, let's, for argument's sake, say that he beat Jordan Levitt. The fact that he was even competitive with, you know, <laughs> that guy who, you know. Yeah taps little sidekicks runs around and twerks like that's all i gotta say and then you go back two fights ago and because i guess what we're worried about is trey ogden potentially getting on top of zell huber trey ogden took down this 40 year old and the 40 year old got back up if that 40 year old can get back up zell huber is going to get back up and knock this guy out so i think zell huber should be a bigger favorite i like it i like it i like it. i don't i don't dispute that i 100 percent agree with that and i honestly god that was another one i was thinking i was thinking about again as i said could have also been the uh dana white privilege too which is no one's kind of caught on to it but uh anthony you're uh yeah mine is going to be uh bill algio and andre feely um i think that algio should be um a bigger favorite in my opinion um I think Feely, I mean, he does have the wrestling advantage, and if he can maintain that for three rounds, sure, he'll win. But I think he's kind of over the hill, and I think we've seen that in his past couple fights. Um, Algio's super active. Cardio's on point, so I think he's just going to be scrambling, scrambling, scrambling. I know he was taken down, what, like eight times by Ricardo Ramos, but Ramos is a lot bigger than Feely, um, and I just better, in my opinion. So I think Algio is going to win this fight, and it's going to, I think, be a little bit easier than the odds suggest. Interesting. Very interesting. All right. Any more remarks? Okay, let's move on to the Sal D'Amato special, uh, one of my favorite ones to go over. It's the fight that where uh, maybe guys don't fight with the best IQ. You know, it's going to be one of those fights where you go back and look at it and be like, or maybe like a grappler striker, that kind of stuff. Uh, mine's going to be Tanner Boser, Rodrigo Nascimento, just because Tanner Boser uh, – you know, he is he was on the show literally earlier today. He's technically on the show on this podcast. Um, but the main reason is also because like he, he falls into split decisions. Uh he's not really a finisher at the moment. And Rodrigo, I also just don't think can finish Bozer. Bozer's pretty damn durable, hasn't finished since like two thousand years. I can't even it's like 2014, 15 or whatever, when he got knocked out like in the first round by um in the regionals. Regardless, though, I don't think it's gonna go to a decision. I don't think it's gonna it's not it's going to see the judges. Uh and again, just Bozer kind of falls into these kind of decisions all the time. So I'm going to go with Dan or Bozer, Rodrigo Uh Damn. I, can't, I fell out of the fucking order. It's supposed to be Dan first and then me, but I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good, man. I hope my boy Ant is right about the Captain uh, Hindsight favorite because I bet on Bill Algio at Dog Odds thinking it's going to be a split decision. You know I love my Dog Odds on split decision type fights. So I got Feely versus Algio as the Sal Diamato special, man. And, but I hope I'm dead wrong, and I hope you're right that he looks like an even bigger favorite because, you know, I got money on those Dog Odds on Algio. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely could see that being a split, but I don't think it will be. That, yeah, that was, uh, that was, that was my back. Hope you're right, <laughs> <laughs> Anthony. Yeah, my Sal Diamato special is uh, it's Damon Jackson and Pat Sabatini. I think these guys uh, kind of present similar styles. Um, if it goes to the ground, I think it will be somewhat competitive. I do think Jackson's better on the feet, but I expect this fight to take place probably on the ground for the most part. Um, 
sure someone could get a submission, but I think if this goes to the judges, it will likely end in a split. So that's how I'm going to go with this one. I was going to say, after talking to Damon, he he doesn't really, he said he's really not going to change his game plan at all. He's not changing his game at all. He's going to try to wrestle and it's just going to try to grapple. Exactly. So, yeah, so probably gonna be that's the style I could, I could see a 15 minute just grappling match. But it won't be a boring one. It won't be a boring grapple. No, I don't think it won't be boring. Be. It just no. go to a split. All right, let's move on to the next one. This is the shut up and watch. You just you don't really care what happens. Uh, you just want to enjoy this fight. You don't really care who wins. Don't really care the result of it. Don't care whatever it is. This is you just shut up. And just watch it. Mine we already, again. We already talked about Andre Feely Bellagio. I think it's gonna be a super exciting fight. Um, I think this is gonna be action all over the place. So um, we've already talked about it once. Don't need to go over it again. But yeah, Bellagio, Andre Feely, Dan, your shut up and watch. I'm going with Basharat versus Gravely, man. I mean, Ooh. I think that Basharat's a really good prospect, and Gravely is the perfect test for a prospect, man. Gravely is super solid. He's good everywhere. The fights when he loses, he's usually winning those fights until he loses. And, like, it's only really good guys that go out there and beat him for the most part. So this is, like, a good prospect test for Basharat to find out where he's at. Is he a future top 15 guy or not? So I'm going to shut up and watch and find out. <laughs> Yeah, that's my pick as well. Um, I, For a lot of the same reasons, I think Gravely is better than what people give him credit for. And I think Basharat has a big test ahead of him. Um, so I'm interested to see it. I think it's going to be a good fight. This could have been my just believed because I think it has a potential to go all 15 minutes and um, just be a super competitive back and forth fight. But I just chose it to be my shut up and watch instead because Sanhagen and song is just higher level so you can't really can't top that no can't really top that at all sucks because i feel like there's a cut there's like the the san the san hagen song car like that fight could have been put everywhere you could have put the uh chitty and robocop you put that everywhere but this is what it is let's go on to our actual picks for the fight for the car let's start at the very beginning nicholas moda cameron van camp i already said who i got i got cameron van camp uh dan who do you got uh, I got Mata, but not confidently. You know, I don't like the price, but I do like the fact that he's paid his dues for a long time. Also, uh, my buddy Robert Hale knocked him out back in the day, and he was super cool about it. Um, if y'all want to see that fight, y'all got to go to my YouTube channel, Half the Battle. Uh, hit the subscribe button. That's the only place you'll be able to see that Nicholas Mata versus Robert Hale fight. Type in Robert Hale highlight reel, and, and you'll see it. But, yeah, I got Nick Mata. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, if, if uh, Van Camp's uh, chin was in question at 70s, How's it going to be when he's cutting an extra uh, 15 pounds? So, yeah, I got Mata to knock him out. Okay, okay, okay. Anthony? Yeah, I'm on Mata. I just I think he's more proven. So, and right. down, the, the weight class drop is a little bit concerning. Van Kent's pretty big. All right, I like the, I like the dispute already. We got Tony Gravely, Javed, Bashara. I'm going to go Bashara. I'm going to hop on the train. Both brothers get the dub this week. But, uh, Daniel, what do you got? Basharat, but I don't know, man. It's tough because Gravely is underrated, and like even the fights that he loses, he's winning before he loses them. He's going to provide a very stiff test, and even if Basharat loses this fight, I still think he can come back and, and do big things, but um, I'm a, I'm a slightly lean Basharat, but I think at the betting window, it's a dogger pass situation. And I'm on Basharat as well. I don't say if he loses, it's like there's no nothing wrong with losing Antonio Gravely. There is nothing. No, there's it. not. No, no, no. All right. Up next, Maria Agapova, Jillian Robertson. Uh, I'm going to fly with Agapova. No reason whatsoever other than I think she's going to cast Jillian Robertson. I think Jillian Robertson is likely to get hit. If she gets hit, she's fine. But that's me. All right. Dan. Yeah, I mean, I think you have fair reasoning. I mean, if Jillian's takedowns get stuffed, then Agapova is going to make her pay. However, I think Jillian's going to get on top of her and submit her. So I'm going to go Jillian. Yeah, um, I'm probably going to go Agapova, but I think Robertson's definitely live for a sub in that first round while she's fresh and feeling good. But I think if Agapova can tie her out a bit, she'll catch her. Okay. okay. I well, guess I got to go Robertson. Oh, what the fuck? You said I Agapova. Mean, uh, Agapova, Agapova. My bad, Agapova. My bad. No, 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 no. Make up your mind. You want Agapova or do you want Robertson? You got you to gotta make no, a decision Agapo here. No, Agapova is Agapova, oh, okay, okay, okay. Just making sure. All right, Trey Ogden, Daniel Zellhuber. Uh, I'm going to ride with Zellhuber, as as Dan said. Like, he should be a massive favor here. I think he is being set up for a massive event here. Um, I think he's going to do it easily. This is a coast. 
It's going to be a master class on Daniel Zellhuber. Dan, I think we already know who you're on here, right? Yeah, I mean, I hope uh, it's a master class because I bet him at minus 245 straight, and I'd love to see big things from this kid. He's got all the talent. He's training at the right place. So, yeah, I like this kid a lot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Easy enough. All right. Denise Gomes, Loma Luke. God, I can never say her name right. Look on me. Is that how you say it? Loma Luka Boom. Luka Boom? I'm not even, I don't know. I'm I have her, sure. though. I have a Luka Boom. So, uh, just, just, I think she hits hard. I think she's going to knock her out. But, uh, Dan, who do you got? Uh, Luke Boom, me split decision. Ooh, okay. That's okay. a good one. Yeah. I like her. I, I like her in this fight. I wasn't impressed with Gomez like two weeks ago or whatever it was on the Contender Series. She's had no chance to get better, really, in those two weeks. Um, no, I don't think she's very good. I think, I think Luma should be a little too much for her. All right. Up next, Aspen Ladd, Sarah McMahon. Uh, don't really care about this one, uh, but I'm going to say uh, – I'm just going to say Aspen Ladd just because I think she's going to be really – she's going to just win a very incredibly boring fight and just kind of lay and pray and cross sniff. So that's what I got, Aspen Ladd, by cross sniffing. Dan, who you got? Sarah McMahon wins the first two rounds and survives a – a rocky third to win a decision. Okay. I'm taking Lad here. Uh, McMahon, she's 41. I mean, she's just... 42, actually. 42. Okay, <laughs> Even <we> better. So, <laughs> she's just a little... She's a little on the older side. Um, you know, hopefully Lad and her coach have it figured out because they're a little interesting pair. But, yeah. What did she go... What did they go borrow for last time? Like, they did something. I can't remember. He was, like, just yelling at her... Oh, that's right. He's like degrading her or something. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. All right. Officer Trevin Giles versus Louis Cosse. Uh, I'm going to go with Trevin Giles. I think this is a good bounce back for him. I mean, it's, again, Michael Morales is uh, one of the – he's a really good prospect. Losing him, nothing to bat an eye at. So I'm going to take uh, Trevin Giles. Yeah, Giles, tour of the octagon. This other kid uh, is super inexperienced. Yeah, same here, Giles, all the way. All right. Up next, friend of the program, Damon Jackson versus pat sabatini uh me and anthony both gonna be on damon jackson here dan, and you're not allowed to say you're on pat sabatini but dan you can say who you're on if you're on the other uh, side. pat sabatini unanimous decision man i mean the kid might be boring but the kid knows how to win um and if you start gassing out against a guy like pat sabatini and it's one-to-one going that third round he's winning that third round so i got pat sabatini unanimous decision all day okay okay all right all right moving on to the main card we got anthony fluffy hernandez mark andre barrio uh again uh anthony hasn't talked to fluffy yet so there, there's no there's no pressure here but i'm gonna take uh fluffy hernandez i think he's gonna win by a yeah. finish don't know what's out i'm on a finish me too is that is that a dog or a cat in the background that's my dog I'm in- Two dogs. Right. I, oh yeah, that is a dog. Okay, well the dogs in the background because I bet the dog in this spot got Mark Andre Barrio, plus one fifty five, one unit. Um, I think Fluffy is super talented, but I just think it should be a closer line fight. So um, hopefully I'm right and I got Barrio for the upset. I was kind of surprised to see it was Anthony is that big of a favorite. I just kind of surprised him to see that right away. But let's move on to the heavyweights. People expect the wrestling. I yeah, mean, they're like he's gonna come out here and just wrestle the shit out of him. I feel like well, you don't, you don't didn't one of y'all say it was uh, your just bleed fight, so hopefully there's no wrestling. Yeah, that was mine. I just thought, you, I just thought, you know, because I think what was the last guy Anthony fought? I think I'm pretty sure it was like a last second replacement. It's like, and it's just, yeah, yeah. So I'm pretty sure he just went out for there. He didn't strike or anything because that was just an easy game plan. Just go out there, grapple the dude to death. Yeah, but I think he's gonna go Josh out there and bang. Frim. Yeah, he's Josh yeah. Frim or the fuck that is. I think Anthony's gonna go out there and bang. I think he's gonna go out there yeah. and bang. Um, I hope you're right. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Tanner Poser, Rodrigo Nascimento. Uh, again, uh, literally Tanner's on the show, so I'm going to go with Tanner, but also I love Tanner, so I'm going to take Tanner Poser. Yeah, I don't really know, man, because I mean, this is another one where, like, if it takes place on the feet, probably lean Tanner. If it goes to the mat, got to go with Rodrigo. I'll lean Tanner, but I ain't laying that price on him. Anthony? Yeah, I'll lean Tanner because, I mean, every match starts on the feet, right? So. Yeah. He's also undefeated against Brazilians, so there's that too. Um, what, what kind of sample size are we talking, though? <laughs> two fights. <laughs> <laughs> two fights. Two fights. Uh, up next, we got Cho Piper uh, going against the sacrificial lamb, Ellen Amadowski. Uh We're on Piper, right? Don't even have to go <laughs> this one. Just early finish. It should be, but I mean, like, if Piper loses to this guy, like, don't act shocked. But yeah, I got Piper. 
Yeah, that's how I feel. I wouldn't be shocked to see Pfeiffer get slept, but I'm not going to necessarily bet on Amandowski, so. Yeah, those can do, all the guys coming out the contender series is kind of a, it's pretty risky. Uh, Andre Feely, Bill Algio. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride with you guys. I think you guys are both pretty pretty high on Bill. I'm going to ride Bill Algio here. Yep, Billy Bill. Billy Bill. Yeah, I bet him plus 115. Hopefully I'm right. I hope you guys are both right, yep. too. Um, all right, up next we got the, if not the main event, but the people's main event, Chidi and Jukiwani, Gregory, Robocop, Rodriguez. Um. I think I'm going to have to ride with Chitty. I think Chitty might, is going to survive the initial onslaught from uh, RoboCop and then uh, finish him late to, late first, early second. Chitty and Jukiwani. Chitty, but uh, I hope both guys have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm on the Chitty side as well. I'm not really confident in that. But oh, neither am I. I, I think he... <laughs> I think it's it's gonna be a good fight, and I'm gonna I gotta lean Chidi. I think he's better standing up, and RoboCop doesn't show the best IQ. So if he wants to try to stand and bang with Chidi, he might have some problems. Might get slept. Might get slept. Now we move on to the main event of the evening: Corey Sanhagen, Song Yadong. Uh, I love Sanhagen. Again, the only people he's lost to are the best of the best, um, and I think Sanhagen's gonna either finish Song Yadong in the fifth round, or it's gonna go to a decision. But I'm gonna take Corey Sanhagen here. I'm going to go Song Yadong, man. He's plus 175. Um, I like San Hagen. I think he's super talented. But when you talk about the best of the best, TJ Dillashaw used to be the best of the best. But TJ Dillashaw was coming off a two-year EPO suspension. And the fight prior, he got knocked out by a flyweight in like 30 seconds. So I was expecting big things from San Hagen in that TJ fight. And he let me down big time. Like even for argument's sake, let's say he won that fight. It was an underwhelming performance, man. I was expecting like destruction i was expecting domination and he let me down so yeah um i gotta go with those plus 175 uh dog odds on song man i think that if we if it goes the distance san, uh, san hagen will probably outstrike him in terms of the numbers but i think uh song can have the bigger moments with power maybe knock him down maybe wobble him and uh, get the decision or the knockout so give me song here yeah i'm kind of on san hagen i think for me, it's more so. I just think he's really unorthodox in something that Song hasn't really seen yet. Um, I think San Hagen has seen fighters more similar to Song, and San Hagen's a bit bigger. Um, he's taller. He's longer. So I think that's going to play a factor, mainly because this fight will be standing. So I'm going to go San Hagen, but again, it's not super confident, and I don't hate the plus one seventy five on Song at all. I mean, I haven't bet this fight whatsoever and if i was i probably would do i don't know what i would do because i, I think songs like the betting side but i kind of think san hagen would win so i don't know i think another thing too san hagen is young too and in that tj fight he fought pretty damn stupid like he just kept throwing he just kept throwing flying knees throwing spinning shit um and i think that's going to be a learning experience for him and i don't think he's going to fight as kind of crazy um this time around so uh Obviously, kind of. I think I don't think he wasn't as crazy in the in the Peter Yan fight, um, but I don't think he's going to be that crazy again either against Song Yudong. So I don't know. I think he's, he's learning space. He's only thirty years old. Uh, so again, we'll see. It'll be a really fun fight, though. Regardless, I don't even think you need to like question if it's going to be like crotch sniffing. They're going to stand and bang. We've already talked about it. It'll be an extremely fun fight. So that's the preview. That's the card. Uh, Dan, thank you for coming on. Uh, if you want to check out your content, shoot us a shoot us a little promo. Yeah, thanks for having me, gentlemen. Y'all can check out my podcast, Half the Battle, everywhere podcasts are found, and my uh, Twitter is Best Fight Picks. Thank you, guys. All right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming on. Okay, so awesome preview. Per usual, uh, Harry's a nerd. He's taking a test right now, so he can't really join us at the moment, which is unfortunate, um, but hopefully he gets a good grade and he gets his degree. Don't want to see him not get a degree, but let's go ahead and dive into our medals for the week. Anthony, why don't you kick us off with your uh, bronze medal? The bronze medal goes to Roger Federer. He is retiring today. Um, one of the great all-time tennis players. Uh, had a great career. And, uh, I remember watching a lot of his tennis matches growing up. So shout out to him. And uh, congrats on retirement. My goat. My goat. Um, <laughs> my bronze medal. Uh, well, to be fair, also, like you know, he didn't win all of his on clay. 
You know, he was kind of, even though he wanted a ton on Wimbledon, you know, he, he was all over the place. I think this is the most tennis we've ever talked about within like a two show span. I think it was like last show. We talked a lot about tennis. So yeah, I mean, I'll bring, I'll bring all kinds of sports on here. I watch, I literally, I watch everything. So. We are technically a sports podcast. So yeah, I watch, I watch a little bit of everything. <laughs> we hit every angle. Uh, actually, which actually this, my medals are nowhere even close to any sports really. Uh, first one is Dana White. No, that is kind of still going to sports. But Dana White gets my bronze medal. It is beyond obvious Everyone who got paid, everyone who like moved around that card in UC two seven nine got paid more. He had the audacity to come out and say, "No, they weren't paid more." <laughs> he like didn't get paid more. And then I forget the other thing he said. And then like apparently now his story is not the same as Hamzat's story. Um, just a lot of different like stories are going around. He's just kind of digging himself into a bigger hole. He said something else stupid too, but he's having a hell of a week. But he gets my bronze medal for just having the audacity to say, "Yeah, they didn't get paid more. No one got yes. paid more." Especially the- when they openly say that they got paid more <laughs> like kevin Holland's <laughs> like i got the bag i don't care <laughs> like exactly. yes they got paid more why the fuck are we trying to act like they didn't like i don't understand so yeah um, i also think it's still funny how dana refers to like nate diaz as a kid or tony ferguson as a kid when they're like pretty close to his age so yeah, I, grown ass men almost grown in ass their men. 40s <laughs> <laughs> so shout out dana white for just that audacity is crazy dude but uh let's kind of move on to your silver medal anthony uh, my silver medal goes to Peyton Manning um, on the last Monday Night Football um, when Russell Wilson and the Broncos were not calling a timeout. If you were watching that broadcast or saw the video, Peyton was sitting there just saying timeout, timeout, timeout. Like he was spazzing. Um, it was hilarious. He basically kind of was shitting on the decision to, to not call a timeout for the Broncos. And um, he's just giving the silver medal more so for the reaction. You have to see the video to actually see like you have to really to really appreciate react. it. Watching yeah. Peyton just react to like bad quarterback play is also incredibly entertaining because he just cringes. Exactly. You can watch him like 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 hurled himself. It's just it is incredibly entertaining to watch him just like watch bad quarterback play or bad coaching decisions. Um, yeah, one hundred percent. It's so much. So fun. yeah, it, it was great. So he, he hits the silver for that. It's also harder to watch. Not harder to watch. I hate. I love the fact that last year, like the Monday Night Crew wasn't that great. So Manning Cash yeah. is easy pick every time of the day. But I like Troy Aikman and Joe Buck. So now that yeah, they're taking over the real one, it's like kind of hard. Like I want to watch both because I like Aikman and Buck. I think they're both really good. But at the same time, though, I love Peyton Manning. Uh, so kind of yeah, him and Eli, their dynamic oh, is really fun. Awesome. I mean, it, they're brother. Obviously, they're brothers. You know, they and but still like the banter between them and. Just the conversations are always really funny. I like how the UFC tried to do something similar with like the Gronkowski's for what UFC yeah. 278 or whatever. Yeah, right. not, it's, it's just not, like not the, same. the same. It's not the same. You need you have it have to be like a G, like imagine GSP doing something like that where he's just actually just sitting down, just shot, shooting shit. But, yeah, you exactly. You would need two people who like actually know what they're talking about. That's what makes the Manning cast so cool. Yeah, yeah. Or you have JP Buys and Roman Delize in there and just see how much awkward tension you can have between them. Oh my god. That's not fair. <laughs> or, you, or you get like Colby and someone. I don't know, pick all the big characters to go in there and just, or sh- co- imagine Colby Covington and Sean Strickland in one of those little like in those dreams. <laughs> oh my god. That would be fucking it, w- it would be it would it would sell. It would sell. I'll tell you what. <laughs> if you want to sell, that'll sell. Uh, speaking of selling and speaking of Dana White, my silver medal goes to Brandon Schaub, um, who by going after Dana White also went after himself, which was kind of funny how every all the insults he was throwing at Dana White, you could be like, dude, that's you. But uh, no, I love the fact that he went out and called out Dana White for um, calling everyone a dipshit, dumb as fuck for calling out UC 278 being scripted, everything being scripted beforehand, which um, it is what it is. Maybe I don't think Whatever happened, it is what it is. I'm not going to say anything about it, but I think uh, I love the fact that Brandon Schaub tried to defend himself. I don't think he wrote the apology. Uh, I, don't, I think it was too too well written, too coherent, um, not enough misspellings. Uh, but no, Brandon Schaub just went over. Not that, enough uh, misspellings. Like, dude, if he notes app that, that would have been pretty funny. Like, that's that would have been really good. Like a little notes app. Mm. Yeah, I mean, he could do that for sure. You know, go in that or like Google Doc or something like that real quick type it up gives them all the little word suggestions mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. whatnot easy money yeah, yeah but hey shout out to brand shopper standing up for himself uh i love the feud they have uh anthony let's wrap this thing up with our gold medals yeah let me get back to it my gold medals once again it's another video um it is to vegans 
Um, they were handing out roses to all the uh, package of meat in the grocery store. Oh my god, um, I thought that was fake. No, that was real. So, <laughs> it's just, I'm all for it. Don't eat meat, but. And I, w- I went for a while where I didn't eat any meat either, so like I'm not talking shit about vegans. It's just more the act of going out and placing roses on that is just kind of odd. But I'll talk shit about vegans. I'll, t- I'll take I'll take the seat. I'll take that for the team. I'll talk shit. Yeah, you can you can do that, bro. But I'm not going to. Not right now. Today's not now is not the time. I think it's very funny they brought roses like to like a grocery store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if they went to like a butcher shop or something and did it, like I think that would make yeah. a lot more sense than going to a grocery store. And then, like, on the meat rack. It's funny yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Shout out vegans. Shout out vegans. Shout uh, my, out to the vegans. So, speaking of vegans, uh, actually, I don't know if he's a vegan. Uh, my gold medal goes to Nick Cannon. He had his ninth kid. Uh, Antonio Rogers Cromartie has some competition for whoever. He's just pumping out the most kids. But Nick Cannon has his ninth kid now. Uh, but at least Cromartie is all with the same woman. I'm pretty sure. Nah, they're diff- different. Is multiple. it? Yeah, there's multiple. I was gonna say Nick Cannon for sure is multiple. I wonder, did he have any with Mariah Carey? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't keep up that much with the Nick Cannon uh, sex life, but I know he. I mean, he's pumping out kids, so a bunch of little cannons running around. Don't you remember like growing up when you all remember Nick Cannon on like Nickelodeon and you know just such a cool dude or whatever? And then yeah, like, sure do. Then he turned into the wild and out guy, uh, and then. Like the America's Got Talent guy? Is that what he became? Or am I missing something in the middle? Also, uh, uh, oh my god, Drumline. That was a good movie. Yeah, he was in a couple good movies. He was in, I mean, Wild and Out, I think, is what kind of stuck his career. That's what he's like known for. Yeah. But he's in a lot of other things. I remember being like in middle school watching Wild and Out, thinking it was the funniest thing in the world. And you saw some guys that were on there that like actually kind of made it big. I, I'm spacing someone at the top of my head, but there's been a couple of people where you're like, oh yeah. Oh, like Mikey Day went from being in Wild and Out to being on SNL. Like that was crazy. I didn't, I was like, I've yeah. heard that guy before. Oh yeah. He was on Wild and Out, like talking shit to like Snoop Dogg or something. I don't know. Yeah. There's definitely a couple of people who've made it off of there. Yeah. Yeah. They just have gotten big. For sure. All right. That's what we got for the show. Any shout outs before we close this thing on out? No. Okay. Cool. Good. By the way, congratulations to the Chiefs on derailing the Chargers hype train. I think I got this wrong last week, so I'll see if I can get it wrong again this week. But I'm, uh, I'm going to say the Chiefs won last night. Congratulations, Patrick Mahomes. Hope he had a lot of catch-up with the stake. Uh, should be a fun football weekend. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited. Everyone's picking the Jaguars to beat the Colts as their favorite upset this week, so I'm excited for that 30-point win for the Colts. Thank you, everyone. Uh, appreciate you. Uh, other than that, that's all I got. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Good? All right, that's the show. Talk to you guys on Tuesday. Uh, shit, we have uh, Mike Jackson coming. No. Yeah. Fuck, Mike Davis. I'm so Mike sorry. Mike Davis. Mike. I am so sorry, Mike. We're literally going to do this interview in an hour. I'm so sorry, dude. But it's going to be a kick-ass interview um, as he comes back. He's now fighting Slava Claus. It's pretty gangster. It's pretty gangster. He's boy versus Slava. I'll guess you Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around with me all the way to the end. Uh, I just want to once again thank the sponsor of the show, Living.Fit. If you're looking to better yourself, make sure you go to download the app or visit the website, Living.Fit today.